Bag Company and welcome to Wash Wednesday. In today's video, we have Brian and Brian, what kind of vehicle do we have here? We got a 1992 Honda Acti truck. Brian, so we got the truck in the wash bay. As you can see, it's a tight fit, right? I'm kidding. So we have plenty of working space in here, and so this is going to be nice. So we're going into this with a normal uh, soap and water wash. We're going to be doing a foam cannon, one bucket, and then from there, uh, we're going to have a separate bucket for the wheels and whatnot. But uh, since this truck has gone through transport and it's never been washed since it's been here on U.S. soil, uh, we're going to be soaking this thing in some fallout remover because there's plenty of rust water in all sorts of different places that we want to start breaking down. So uh, we have that and we also have our uh, citrus all-purpose cleaner here that we're going to be doing like a pre-treat with as well and then hopefully the wash will go pretty quick so we can get to the trim, we can get to the polishing, we can get to all that to really get this thing looking better than ever. So uh, you ready to get started? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right, Brian, so we have your 1992 Honda Acti truck. That's a, that's, a, that's a special way to put it. This is also known as a K truck, right? Yep, yeah, it maxes out at 660 cc's. So uh, it's, it's roughly a motorcycle size engine. Okay. You know, on a beginner motorcycle, I guess, for some. So a motorcycle fast or more motorcycle Ooh. slow? It's, I mean, the weight to power ratio <laughs> is good, but yeah. it's slow. Okay. <laughs> it's super slow. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll take it. And I also want to know about the import process. What does it take to import one of these over to the States? Is it difficult? Is it hard? Did you have to go through somebody? Did you do it yourself? Yeah, I've been looking for a truck from Japan for about four years now. Just, okay. uh, you know, never really had the timing right. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, basically went through an importer like you talked about. There's okay. a company in Japan called Japan Car Direct that I went through and they're basically your middleman for your Japanese eBay, if you will. Okay. And, uh, yeah. You just tell them what your price is, what you're looking for, you know, any criteria. So uh, yeah, I went through a Japan Car Direct. I told them what I wanted, and as soon as I saw this blue one, I knew I had to have the blue because normally they all come in white. It's yeah. uh, usually kind of cookie cutter truck. Pretty but, common, uh, common color. Uh, the process was pretty easy though. Uh, I went through, told them, they put bids in for me. And then from there, they put it on a boat. I didn't have to do any kind of the logistics or anything like that. What? Yeah. No, that's it? Yeah, I either have a choice of going to Tacoma or Long Beach. Okay. Uh, depending on which way I wanted to go, so. Yeah, so where do you have it delivered to? Tacoma. As much as I would want to drive this back, you know, going. The speeds, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Going the on speeds. the freeways, hitting the blues. Yeah. You know, I can't imagine doing that in the truck, so I definitely had it uh, shipped down here to me. Okay, all right, so we just need to pull this thing out now. Um, Levi is gonna be in charge of cleaning the rubber mat here. He is the keeper of the mat here at the Rat Company. It's actually part of this job description. Levi, keeper of the mat. So he'll knock this thing out. We'll get over here and start drying this thing off. Basically, I mean, this is a, this is a low mileage, all wheel drive. It is a truck, right? Yeah. What's typically the price range that these go for? Yeah, I mean, the trucks themselves can go anywhere from a hundred bucks at auction to Jeez. a couple thousand. It really depends on the options, yeah. what people want, um, the demand at the time. So uh, this one here has got 72,000 kilometers. So it really the cost of the truck was the, the smallest part the fees and getting it over and customs and all that actually is what adds up more. Wow. Talk about easy. It's the easiest car to drive I think I've ever done. So, uh, 
All right, so now we're gonna be moving on to the claying process. So for this, um, we're gonna grab some Coach Kimmy clay spray and our uh, ultra clay towels. Um, and we're just gonna knock it out. I think it should look awesome. I think we're gonna remove a lot of this chalkiness and add a little bit more depth to this blue. When you go to register this, because it's technically it's being delivered into Washington, and you're registering this as an Idaho vehicle, how does that work? Yeah, that's where really the money that you pay the broker and everything comes in. They give okay. you a packet that says, here's the Japanese title, it's translated into English. They have all the paperwork there for you in one packet that they send to you. And you take it down to the DMV just like any other car. And with uh, the truck, you know, there's a couple of problems. They didn't know what to classify it as, but okay. yeah, you know, I don't blame them. Yeah. yeah, is it a motorcycle? Is it a truck? What is this thing? I get, I got you. Yeah, they thought it was a UTV. They wanted to register it for off-road. Oh, consulting. really? <laughs> yeah, but we got it squared away. Uh, yeah. Anything over 25 years old can come in as a vehicle, and so yeah, they uh, they did a little bit of research on their side and uh, got got plates on it. All right, so at this point, we have a clayed vehicle. Ready for a little bit of polish here. So we're gonna grab some machines. Brian, have you ever polished before? A little bit as a hobby. A little bit, okay. So we're gonna give him the three inch machine. Not a lot of damage he can do with that. I think that'd be a good way to start. Basically, we do an Uno one step, an Uno Protect and Bead Maker combination. It's not all about getting as much correction as possible. It's about applying the, the Uno Protect to the vehicle while getting in a little bit of working time. It is a gloss enhancing, great one step, uh, but it's not gonna be full correction like if we were to do a compound and a polish, but I think it'll do wonders for the truck anyway. So let's grab it and get started. All right. awesome dude I think that this is an incredible little vehicle and it's something that I'm jealous of because I, I think when I see this I think how cool would it be to put like you know an old Honda motorcycle in here maybe a new Grom or something like that and trailer this around it would just look super super awesome especially rolling into like a car show or something like that but what are your future plans for this thing do you have, do you have anything planned anything lined up any mods k20 swap you know, ls swap <laughs> LS. what are you thinking yeah, yeah i'm gonna throw an ls in it <laughs> no really my my plans are i'm gonna throw some wheels on there those those little tractor tires you know once you get rolling yeah. they kind of get sketchy for sure oh I, I believe it yeah so i'm gonna throw some uh throw some 15s on there i think and at least get that squared away and then okay. from there I think like you said, just go to some car shows and, and see uh, see people's reactions, checking yeah. out in person. So we just finished up the Honda Acti. I will never get used to saying that because it seems like it's not the real name, but it is the real name. Ryan, what do you think? It's amazing. I can't believe how the paint came out after it. It was just so chalky and just grainy when it came in. And then all of just the touches with the bumpers and the black trim. The gloss really did impress, I think, everybody. Everybody was watching as we were going through and removing all of that chalkiness from the single stage paint. Um, it started bringing it back. And then it was just the, the topping of that bead maker really kind of set everything else over the top as well. And so we hit the windows, we hit the trim. Uh, we did hit PSS on the trim, then hit bead maker over the top of that. Uh, PSS does have protective qualities to it but hitting a little bit more bead maker is not gonna hurt anything. And so um, overall, man, it's glossy, it looks good, the mud guards, everything like that has been treated. What would you say is your favorite part of the process that we did today? Just seeing the transformation when you hit this side right here, 
that was that was what did it. Like washing it was cool, and I guess the second favorite close tie has got to be with the fallout. Oh yeah, that was amazing. Right, was that fallout. was that yeah, it was yeah. fallout remover. Yeah, it was insane. It's just so cool to see something that came from Japan, something that was imported the right way, um, something that still has all these little JDM touches to it. I mean, the the can right here, this Red Bull can is from Japan, and it even has all the you know Japanese writing on it. It's just super cool. I think that this is a. Uh, this is gonna get a lot of attention. I think the next car meet or car show or even just driving down the road, I think you're gonna get a, you're gonna get waved down. Hey, what is that thing? What is that thing? It's a mail truck. Can't wait to see this on the road. Brian, thank you for being part of Wash Wednesday. Hopefully you had fun and learned something. Um, as always guys, if you guys like this video and like Wash Wednesdays, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below for more and stay tuned for more videos right here at The Rat Company.